here and then back into the poke, poking. Okay, thank you, Sergeant Jay. All right, moving back on, moving on. Okay. Okay, now we're moving on. Hands are here. We did the triple striking. Now we're going to go right into what we call the figure eight striking. Figure eight, you've seen them and it was very popular. Figure eight striking, you've seen it with new chucks. The guy swinging the new chucks back and forth. Very popular movement. Easy, but it has a lot of value. You put your right foot forward, right hand forward. When you're working the stick, same leg, same hand. Stick is up, always holding it. Remember what I showed you, two inches from the bottom, four fingers. You're coming in here, figure eight striking. Inside, inside your body, looping. Notice the point now. Looping. Now you let go of the wrist because you're doing a figure eight strike. So you have to use your wrist. You don't like the wrist. Can't keep the wrist locked like this anymore. Can't figure eight like this. You have to let go of the wrist now. Looping. Outside, looping. Inside, looping. Outside, looping. Notice the point of the stick. Inside, outside. Inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Outside, inside, outside, inside, switch inside. So your left hand. Start from your center. Inside, looping. Outside, looping. Inside, looping. Outside, looping. Inside, outside. 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 Switch the sides. Inside, outside. Do it five times, 10 times, 50 times. Switch in sides. Keep going from left to right, and then you build up your speed. One, two, three, four, and switch. And one, two, three, four, 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 for yame, good. Okay, figure eight striking. I want to show you something. You're going to find this really interesting. With the figure eight striking, I know you've seen movies before where the man might have wanted to see gals movies or something like that, or the TV shows now everybody's doing on these, where a guy grab a pool stick, break it in half, and then he grabs it and he starts doing like this. Here, he said, oh, wow, that guy's really good on East man. He's not. All he's doing is figure eight striking, alternating from the left and the right hand. And when you take it, look. Right hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. And then you bring it closer to your body, and that's what you got. That's all it is. It's a simple figure eight striking is what they're doing. And they just alternate from right to left. There's nothing fancy, but it looks fancy. When you see it in the movie, oh, wow, guy really know how to swing the sticks. Figure eight striking, and you're alternating from right to left. That's all that is. But the value of the figure eight is, when you're doing figure eight, give me a circle, guys. You got a group of guys around you. Like I said, in the street, you may not have two sticks, but you may have one stick. You may have a telescopic baton when you flick it open that you carry, right? For a lot of policemen carry. You open up your ass baton. Bang. Now you got three guys. You can't go to each of them. You can't do that. You're going to get caught out there. But with figure eight striking, you can hit all three guys and understand moving in your circle. Weapon never stops moving. You're watching your back, and you're flowing from one person to the other. Put a stick up. Put your stick up. Put one stick up. You can hit the sticks. The stick, watch what happens. It pulls down off the weapon. It pulls down off the weapon. It doesn't stay there like this. Yeah! When you're moving and when you're hitting, it's here, 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 here. Boom, you're moving all around. So if you listen to the sticks, that's three strikes. That was three hits. Listen, click, click, click. There you go, click, click. Boom, there's my figure eight, moving. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. You understand? Figure eight has great value. You can hit something and continue all the way through. Three guys, four guys, and as you're moving, you're turning. So you're watching your whole back. Figure eight striking. It's not just for style. It has a lot of value. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Now we're going to move on to upper body. We use upper body scaling. 
Okay? We'll take the next move, upper body scaling. Upper body scaling. We're going to move back a little bit, fellas, because you got to come forward. Upper body scaling. You're striking low, middle, high. Now watch this. Your hand turns to the inside. Low, middle, high, to the inside. Understand, you're coming back to the inside because you can no longer continue going through the man on the outside. He pushed back. He hit. He blocked. He deflected. It came back to you. So when the weapon comes back to you, instead of you putting it back and reloading and coming back, when it came back to you, you took it in a flowing motion and redirected it back to the inside. So it's waist, middle of the body, head. He pushed off and blocked. To the inside. One, two, three, to the inside. Maple Leaf is hitting something on that last strike and bing, bouncing back to the inside. One, two, bounce back to the inside. One, two, bounce back to the inside. Switch your side. One, two, three, to the inside. One, two, three, to the inside. One, two, three, to the inside. One more time. One, two, three. Three, now alternate sides, switch the sides. One, two, three, to the inside. 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 One, two, three, and yame. Upper body scaling. Put it from the outside to the inside. I want to go into inner body scaling, then I'm going to show you the application for both. Inside. Now you're striking, pushing like you're, like you're scaling straight body. Like you're jabbing. One, two, three. Now, what happened with this one? This one doesn't bounce back because it doesn't bounce back into your face. This one is for when a person does this and it looks like this on the side of you. When you try to strike a person in the face and he pulled his head back or he might have jumped back. So you follow through and you come back to the inside with that weapon. He jumped back on that last strike and you struck. The beauty for that is when I'll show you an application, you can make up a whole lot of distance. So now that's like this. It's striking. Always knees bent. Always stay relaxed. Low, middle, high. Let it point. Let the point now go right towards you. Straight, right towards your opponent. Circle around your head to the inside. One, two, three, to the inside. One, two, three, to the inside. One more time. One, two, three, and switch your sides. Now, one, two, three, to the inside. One, two, three, to the inside. One, two, three, to the inside. One more time. One, two, three, and switch inside. Alternate. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, final blow. One, two, three, final blow. One, two, three. Now, when you get this down a little bit, now you want to step forward and learn how to make up distance. When that man jump out, you move forward. One, two, three, jump forward. One, two, three. Jump forward. One, two, three, move forward. One, two, three, move forward. Low, middle, high, move forward. One, two, three, move forward. One, two, three, move forward. One, two, three, move forward. Last one. One, two, three, final blow. Okay. Sulo, please. Okay. Now, watch. Watch what I'm talking about. Just hold your sticks up, please, Phil. Can you pick this up fairly? Right? This is a good five feet, six feet between us. Hold a stick closer to your face, please. Not too far from me. Closer to your face. Watch. We don't expect you in the street to do this. But in the street, you might decide to swing in someone's face and they pull their head back. Put the stick down for a second. You might decide to do this and the person jump back. So now out of habit and understanding, when you did this and the person jump back, you don't want to go here. Because if the man jump back, jump back. You don't want to stop here and have to now try to run him down and regroup. There's two motions. One motion. When he jumped back, person is still hit. You made up that distance. Put your stick up. Four feet. Move your hand in. Don't stretch it out to give me a little aid. Hand in. Four feet. You may feel that you're safe here. People are watching this and watch the value of this. You may feel that you're safe here. Because you say, oh, I'm four feet away. But all it takes is one step and a circular motion, and it'll make up all that distance. Right there. Without the swing, just coming over, 
in that last part of the drill. You made up four feet. Now, where and how can this hurt you? Well, you're just there having a conversation with a person. They may be here, you may be there. You figure, okay, the guy got a stick, but you're talking trash from four feet away. He's talking trash four feet away. You're waiting for this guy to go, oh, I'm going to crack your head and come at you. But if the person knows, he'll just stand here like this. Look, say, yo, I'm tired of you talking. Boom. And before you can even pull anything out, I showed this before on another tape, before you can even pull anything out, reach for your gun, jump back, reach for your knife, you are hit. The man is on top of you just with that inside circular motion movement. So you understand the value to this. And that's how it can work for you, and it can work against you if someone else knows. That's a very good drill, though. Thank you very much. Let's... Moving on. Cut regular outside and inside body scaling. Outside scaling, inside scaling. We're just going to move. I'm skipping through a couple of them drills, but I want to focus on most of them. What's the point in them? Outside, up, outside scaling, inside scaling. Outside scaling, low, middle, and high. Low, middle, and high. Low, middle, and high. Switch inside. Low, middle, high. Knee, rib, and head. Knee, rib, and head. Knee, rib, and switch inside. One, two, three, switch it. One, two, three, switch it. Low, middle, high, hip and knee, rib and head, switch it. Knee, rib and head, hit and knee, rib and head, push it. Knee, rib and head, hit and knee, rib and head, hit and knee, rib and switch your sides. Okay, now we're going to go into inside scaling. That was outside scaling. Scott, outside of the body. Outside scaling. This is inside scaling. Okay, and we're moving now to inside scaling. Inside scaling, striking low, middle, and lean. Low, middle, lean. Never do this, people. Watch my legs carefully. Never over lean and over strike. Because all the person has to do is just touch you and pull you and you're off balance. When you're striking and you're leaning, it's here. Leaning with your body, feet stay solid on the ground. This way, if somebody pulls you, you're doing this. As opposed to doing this. Leaning forward. Don't try to make things happen. If it happens, if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. Okay? Striking. Low, middle, high, switching. Low, middle, high, switching. Low, middle, high, switching. One, two, three. Hit and low, middle, high. Hit and low, middle, high. Push and low, middle, high. Hit and low, middle, high. Hit and low, middle, high. Push and low, middle, high. Hit and low, middle, high. Hit and low, middle. Yame. Good. Inside and outside scaling. Value. Once again, when you're using it, if you're using a knife, so they're going to say you can chain anything, short stick, walkman, whatever. It's like jabbing. When you jab, when they teach you how to punch a boxer, they don't go. When they teach you how to punch in boxing, it's a move. Boom, 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 boom. Your hand's moving. Hit, hit, hit. You're striking, repetition striking. But now you're doing repetition striking, except you're moving up and down, up and down the body when you're doing repetition striking or your hip. And the value to that, you can clearly see. The person thinks you're going one way, you're down, down to another. He sees this and then you're moving down here. And it allows you to scale the body up and down. Very important because the concept is never believe and get focused in on one. You're programming yourself. One, two, three, high and low. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Person's not going to figure you out. You don't have to start low. You can start high, go low, go middle. You can start middle, go high, go low. You can do whatever you want to do. Choice is yours. But the thing is not to commit yourself to one place, one area, one spot, and think you got to make that technique happen and make it work. You don't have to force it in there. Moving on. Okay. We got fanning and poking. Fanning and poking. We're going to fan and poke from here. Fanning, six point. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh, and thigh. Switching sides. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh, and thigh. Notice the body bend. Temple, temple. Moving out of body. Bend your body. Rib, thigh, and thigh. Don't be lazy. Temple, 
temple. Rib, rib, thigh, and thigh. Six points. One, two, middle. Three, four, lower body. Five, and six. And one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh, thigh. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh, thigh. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh. Last one. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh, thigh. Now we're going to go with the poking. Same six-point poking. Keeping them together. Poking. Now, this is similar. Remember how we did the poking before? From left to right, now we're doing six-point poking. So you learn to go from right to left side. Temple. Circular motion inside. Temple. Circular motion. Rib. Inside. Circular motion. Rib. Circular motion. Outside thigh. Circular motion. Now, when you're doing this on the body, it's either groin or the outside thigh, depending upon how your hand is positioned. Notice every time we do the poke, you know, the point of the weapon is always pointed towards the opponent. Even when we switch, we don't do this when we switch. We don't bring the weapon down. We don't go here, bring the point down, here, bring the point down. It's here. Point always stays with it. Here. If you can't see it with the stick and understand it, do it with a butter knife at home. One, two, notice the point and blade. Three, four, five, and with the left hand now. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh, and thigh. Switching. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh, and thigh. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh, and thigh. Notice the body rocking forward and backwards. Rock, thigh, and thigh. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh. One more. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh, and yame. Good. Cirillo, please. With a knife. It is what it is. An angle, so you can kind of pick it up. It is what it is. Temple. Temple. Rib. Rib. Thigh and thigh. This is very deadly. Poking and fanning? Incredibly deadly. Because it can't be stopped. It's called redirection. It's like taking the spoil dean, throwing it against the wall. The harder you throw it against the wall, the faster it's going to bounce back. No matter what the person trying to do to stop you, they can't stop you because you have no intention of going to that immediate point to begin with. As soon as you feel any type of resistance, any type of block, bang, you're moving to the next point. Now, when you're doing this, I'll use a plastic knife, a rubber knife, to show you this so I don't cut my opponent. Here, poking and fanning. Watch the combination. If I came in this way, what's it get? Motion causes motion. Man is going to try to block me. He's going to try. I'll show you this first just using one hand. Then I'm going to show you using the other hand why it's so valuable to learn how to use both your hands and even out both sides of your body. Here, he tried to block me. Now I don't stop and try to force it in. I go to the next point. Here. Now the next point is here. Now let's say, you see, he got his hands up. He can block them, both points, right? But who says and where is it written that I have to go to the head? There's no rules out in the street. Whatever works. So when you poke it from one point to the other because it's six points, you're going to go from here to here. He can't stop that. Even if I give him something to go off, even if I suck at him and go two or three times, and I go like this, moving, so he thinks that I'm coming for his head all the time, and then all of a sudden, boom, I stop it, and I go down here. Or I go here, 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 move. I got in. It's in. And that's without utilizing my other hand. It's very important that you understand when you're poking, you're going from one side to the other, and the person has no idea where you're going from. I could start here. We could be in the knife battle. Think about this. When did you last time you see somebody stab somebody like this in the knife battle? Boom! Right there. It's in. By the time you went to jump back, the blade got plunged into your thigh. Now from your thigh, as soon as you react, I come up, I grab you. I got you. I got you. So as soon as you motion, boom, the other hand got you. Boom, hit, boom. Back on top, back around. Cutting, moving, now the hands come into play. If he stopped me, here, look, notice.
Notice my other hand now. I get shocked with it. Notice my other hand. Paul with it. Notice my other hand. I can block it out. Hit. And then continue to poke. Because now he can't stop this when it's coming from behind him. Notice the poking. Oh, it comes from behind. And then from behind, look, we're so close. I come back in front. That's when you did the swing. You said, here, woo. And cut. Not a fanny. Okay? Thank you, Pastor. So the judge. Not a fanny. You all right? Not a fanny. Catch my hand. This is a typical technique. You try to cut somebody in the street, they're going to reach out and try to grab you. Either they'll grab you this way or they'll grab you this way. Try to catch your hand if you're coming down. They always want to stop you, so they're going to catch your hand. Or catch your hand anyway, any way you want. Whichever way makes you feel better. Okay? Catch your hand. That's what they're going to do. Normal reaction is to do this. When they catch it, you try to fight it and take it back. But because you understand fanning, where you hit and bounce back. Hit and bounce away. Hit and bounce away. When you did this, the hand just bounced. As soon as it hit, it bounced. Catch the hand. Catch. 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 See? Catch. Can't stop it. Catch. Catch. Plan and then poke. It's too fast, people. It's too fast. But the beauty is here. Now let's do a little walkman technique. So you understand concept. That's what's important when you're rolling out in the street. It's concept. You got your walk. I see people carry the radio like this all the time. Somebody walks in. Yo, you understand such and such, such. Give me some money. What? Excuse me. What did he say? Give me some money. Give me some money. What, what was that? Give me some money. Now they starting. Yo, yo. What do you want? And they never think of the walkman as a weapon. You never have to take your headphones off. Continue to listen to your music. And then after you listen to your music, you fan him on both sides of his face. Boom. Using the walkman. Punch him. Boom. Hit. Fan. Moving right to left. Notice, grab it, grab it, pull, start, hit, come back around. You understand? It is very effective movement. Can't stop it. Person is here. Here, if that hand come up to block, it doesn't matter. You have the other hand. Here, you move it. It fan to the inside. Here, you're shocking. Mm, groin. If he grab my hand this way, here, hit him in the groin. Bang, top of it. Here, come up. Boom. You're right there. Look at that combination. Look at it. Stop me. Can't stop me. Can't hit me. Boom, it's right there. Now you're moving on to do what you need to do. It's a concept. It's just the concept which you work by. Everything goes. Never leaving anything out. Because I know how to use both my hands, I never have to do this. I have more than one tool that I'm working with. So why should you just rely on one thing. That's like playing football and you only got one quarterback. When your main quarterback goes down, you have no backup. What is the game over? Game's not over. Go to the next one. That's why every player on a football team is replaceable by a backup. You must have something to back you up. You put this player in the game. When he gets taken out, this player goes in the game. When he gets taken out, this player goes in the game. If this one, for whatever reason, gets taken out, this player goes in the game. If for whatever reason this player gets taken out, bang, that player goes in the game. That's the concept. Always have something to replace something once something is stopped or frozen. You don't try to take it back, move on to another point. Okay, now I move back with the sticks. Thank you, Sister. Okay? I was upper body and lower body fanning and poking, six points. Now we're moving on, okay, to cicatero striking. A couple of things we have in there that I wanted to show you. Before I go into the cicatero striking, I want to go into rib block and collarbone. I want to move back up the ladder, okay? Rib block and collarbone when you're striking. And this is a very important drill. Striking rib, blocking, collarbone. Put it under your arm. Rib. Blocking, collarbone. Put it under your arm. Rib, blocking. Notice this block is like a windshield wiper on a car. How it flicks back and forth. All right? I keep things simple. This is it. Like a windshield wiper on a car. You're striking rib, blocking, collarbone. 
put it on the arm. Rib blocking collarbone on the arm. Rib blocking collarbone. 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 Rib blocking yummy. Hey, rib blocking collarbone. If you're doing this rib blocking collarbone with each other, and all these drills, mind you, you can do with another person. We're just not going to clutter you up or bore you with all these drills and the hitting together. But you're moving three strikes. One, two, three. Hitting rib blocking collarbone. Rib blocking collarbone. Rib blocking collarbone. Rib blocking. Good. Now if you're doing it, look. Empty hand. One, two, three. What do you drill? One, two, three. Striking. One, three. Hitting. Now you notice the hand motion and movement? Three strikes. Two, three. One, two, three. The same thing as if I had a stick in my hand. Now I'm going to show you. Empty hand. Watch. Knife. He blocks it. One, two. Now I'm coming. He blocked my second strike. Here come my right hand. Collarbone. Now when he transfers, watch what happens to the knife now. One, two, three. Block it. Once he focused up on this, mm, you got it. He got it. Don't make a difference if in this hand. If I start out like this, if I got a nice fight, he's watching which hand? He's focused on the hand with the weapon. He's not focused on the hand that don't have the weapon. So now the hand that don't have the weapon, he doesn't care about. He don't see the, how close it is. So when I did this, this is what he's going to go to block. And then now, because I said low, I did this, low high, take them high, the hand came up to block. Underneath, I got my opening. Now, for that rib blocking collarbone, look at it on the body. Let me use uh, my Cerillo police, because you got the white gear. Okay? Look at it on the body. Here's this guy giving you confrontation, maybe gesturing, give me some hand movement. Gesturing, talking to you in your face here. Rib blocking collarbone. Now, because I don't got no sticks in my hand, rib becomes a groin strike. Motion causes motion. When I hit there, I'm not taught to hit back up or hit and strike. Go into the next move. Now, because he's not throwing anything, it becomes a strike. That's one strike, two strikes, and I hit my follow-up. Now I ain't got no sticks, so it's not a collarbone strike, really. It's more of a cross. See how I switch it to put it right into punching? So now it's like, yo, guy, I got a couple of dollars. Yo, whatever, yo, yo, boom, 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 come down, right there. There, you just push it, boom, and you drill, and you tag him, and you grind. Strike. Strike. Boom. And repeat the process. Hit, hit, boom. Close quarter. Hit, 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 hit. Boom, moving. And if I miss with the punch, boom, I throw the elbow strike in there. If I don't, if I'm too close to heal, or it's better if I to put the elbow in there. But that's rib blocking collarbone. Let's say he decides to motion me because motion causes motion. The man's not crippled. I tag him in his stomach or I miss the groin and I hit him here. He's going to punch me in my face. You notice how the hand said, boom, block. Now I have a block. Before, when I did it this way, I didn't have a block, so the block became a strike. One strike, two strike, three strike, but now I got a block. Boom, now we go in to the next motion. That's how it works. That's rib blocking collarbone. And if you block it, rib blocking, I block this, block this hand out. See, watch. Rib blocking, blocking, There's no way that I get caught out there. Watch that from your side so you can see it clearly. He blocked this. I struck here and caused motion. He react. He blocked. He see me coming. He blocked. Bang, I break the kneecap. Or, boom, kick him in his groin. But look what's happening. We're all occupied up here now. All of us are occupied up here. Now it's time to, bam, break the leg. Kick him in his groin. Hit, hit elbow, shot, palm. It's all right there for you to work. Same on these movements. But where did I get that from? You got that from the stick. So you're not mastering the stick. You're mastering movements from the stick. Understand that. Very, very, very important. I want to show you. Watch how I put them together now. Same rib blocking collarbone. I did this. Now he motioned. He blocked that. He came here. He went to block this. He went to block punch. Now watch me poke in on him and turn it. See, that's my poking now. Here. He stopped me. I turn. I come inside. If I was using a knife, 
Colton. See? Back to this again. Temple, temple, rib, rib, thigh, thigh, potent. You put it all together. There's no 